Space is a vast three-dimensional expanse that is home to infinite celestial objects, stars, planets, and natural satellites such as the Moon. Did you know how the Moon was formed in the first place? Around four billion years back, an object larger than Mars called Theia decided to hit the Earth and that big crash, also popularly known as the giant impact theory, split the Earth and there we have the Moon. The Moon can glow like a beacon in the sky or just minutely shine through a fragment. The purpose of a Moon is definitely something more than just looking beautiful. Life on Earth is majorly influenced by the Moon, which is why it's important that the Moon sticks around. But the Moon is always on the move. Did you know that each year, the Moon drifts further away by an estimated 1.5 inches from the Earth? What if it had its own mind and drifted away way too much and suddenly disappeared? Would you miss it? And wouldn't you be curious about what exactly happened? If we don't have the Moon around, the Earth's rotation would suddenly speed up. Whoa! Can you imagine what would happen to us? Without the Moon, a day on Earth would just last 6 to 12 hours. There could be an excess of a thousand days in a single year. This is the result of the Moon's gravitational force. The Moon also majorly influences the Earth's tides. Without the Moon, the rise and fall of tides would be smaller by 75% and that would definitely affect the weather significantly. The Earth tilts at an angle of 23.5 degrees due to the gravity of the Moon. In the past, Earth's tilt has changed by around 1 to 2 degrees and researchers believe that this could have caused the ice ages. The sudden disappearance of the Moon would create an imbalance in the Earth's gravity making the Earth's axis sway between 10 to 45 degrees, prompting no seasons or even extraordinary seasons. The Moon's sudden absence would enormously affect animal life on Earth. Some animals, especially nocturnal species like owls, simply see better at night or are aided by the light of the Moon. Many species of coral spawn on or near the full Moon while other factors, such as weather and water temperature, also influence their spawning. The event occurs near a full moon. The reproduction cycle of the red crabs is governed by lunar signals. The female crabs discharge their eggs into the ocean during the last quarter of the moon. Phew, that's a big relief that the moon hasn't disappeared yet, and there isn't proof that it's going to go anywhere soon. We bet you value the moon more now. Check out this space for more such interesting space facts. The sun is the only star in our solar system and gives life to everything here on Earth. So what exactly would happen if the sun suddenly disappeared one day? Would you be able to handle eternal darkness and cold temperatures? If the sun suddenly blinked out of existence, you'd have nothing to worry about, for the first eight minutes anyway. After that, all hell would likely break loose. Still, it wouldn't be the instantaneous end to life on Earth that you might think. The Earth would plunge into darkness. Light takes roughly eight minutes to reach Earth from the Sun. For that reason, if the Sun disappeared, we'd still see it in the sky for another eight minutes, after which the Earth would go totally dark. No gravitational pull. The Sun is the anchor point of the solar system. At 333,000 times the mass of Earth, it exerts a hefty pull that keeps the planets locked in their orbits. If all that gravitational force disappeared, the Earth would fly off into space. It would still take us eight minutes to feel it. That's because, according to Einstein's theory of relativity, gravitational waves travel at the same speed as light. Invisible Moon we also wouldn't be able to see the Moon after roughly eight minutes, since we only see it because it reflects the light of the Sun. With no sunlight or moonlight, we would see a peaceful glow in the sky from the stars and other planets. Electricity would still keep working, so our cities would stay lit for as long as the power lasted. No photosynthesis. With no sunlight, photosynthesis would stop, but that would only kill some of the plants. There are some larger trees that can survive for decades without it unbearable temperatures. Within a few days, however, the temperatures would begin to drop, and any humans left on the planet's surface would die soon after. Oceans freeze over. Within two months, 
the ocean's surface would freeze over, but it would take another thousand years for our seas to freeze solid. By then, however, the atmosphere would collapse, radiation would seep in, and Earth would be an inhospitable wasteland drifting aimlessly through space. Luckily for you, the Sun is showing no signs of disappearing anytime soon. What is déjà vu? You walk into a restaurant for the very first time, and as you look around, you get a strong feeling of familiarity, even though you have never been to this place before. This is what we call déjà vu. Déjà vu is a French term which literally translates to already seen. It's that overwhelming feeling of having already experienced the present situation we're in, but the time, place and context of the event are uncertain or believed to be impossible. Although some interpret déjà vu in a paranormal context, like experiences from past lives, scientists and psychologists explain it as a momentary misfiring of neurons in the brain, which creates false connections. One idea is that déjà vu is a sort of brain twitch. How and why does déjà vu happen? Almost 60 to 80% of the Earth's population has experienced a feeling of déjà vu. But how does this strange phenomenon take place? Unfortunately, there isn't a single explanation for déjà vu. This experience occurs without any prior notice and is short-lived, and hence makes it nearly impossible to be studied, as scientists cannot sit and wait around for it to happen. There are multiple theories that try to explain déjà vu. Let's talk about the two most common ones that are widely used today. Familiarity, recall and recognition. A person visits a new city and decides to take a walk in the park. He comes across a lake and sees some ducks swimming around and suddenly gets a feeling that he's been here before. But that's impossible. This brings us to our first theory of familiarity and recognition. This theory simply states that remembering requires two processes working together, familiarity and recollection. Our brain is constantly scanning our environment to determine if an object or situation is familiar. Once a familiar object is spotted, the brain locates the past memory related to it with the help of the hippocampus, which plays a major role in memory and learning, and we relive the entire memory in our brain. But sometimes, when the brain only finds an object familiar as one from the past, but cannot recollect what it is or the finer details of that event, it means the two processes have gone out of sync. Hence, we are left with only a sense of familiarity and no recollection. This is when we experience déjà vu. But this does not explain why we experience déjà vu for events that are truly unfamiliar, or why we don't experience it for every familiar object. This can be explained by our second theory of divided attention. If we take the same park example with a person focusing on a swing, when we closely focus on one part of our environment and the rest of the world drifts away to the unconscious, and suddenly we snap back to reality, and it feels like we've been to this place before, and in fact we have, just right now we weren't paying attention. While we were concentrating deeply on one particular object, our brain was working and subliminally, that is, below our conscious awareness, taking in the environment, and hence we felt a feeling of déjà vu. So, that was déjà vu for you. What if you could relive a favourite moment of your childhood by going back to the past? What if you could see what you look like when you get older? Is there a way we could travel back to our past or sneak into our future? Is time travel possible? Well, the truth is, we all travel in time. However, the reality is much more muddled. Not all scientists believe that time travel is possible. Some even think that it is dangerous, and an attempt would be fatal to any human who chooses to undertake it. But we're curious, and you're curious too. So, let's look at some theories of time travel. A 20th century scientist, Albert Einstein, developed a theory called special relativity. Einstein's theory of special relativity says that time slows down or speeds up depending on how fast you're moving relative to something else. The faster we travel through space, the slower we travel through time, at least to a stationary observer. Let us take an example of the twin paradox to understand special relativity. The twin paradox is a thought experiment in special relativity involving identical twins. 
One of the twins, John, decides to make the journey into space in a high-speed rocket, while the other twin, Jack, remains on the Earth. Say the age of the twins is 15 years old, when John decides to leave Earth in a spacecraft travelling at about 99.5% of the speed of light, which is much faster than we can achieve now, and celebrated only five birthdays during his space voyage. When he gets home at the age of 20, he finds that his other twin Jack is now 65 years old, retired and enjoying his grandchildren. Because time passed more slowly for John, he will have experienced only five years of life, while his twin Jack will have experienced a full 50 years. Approaching the speed of light, John, who was inside the spaceship, aged much more slowly than his twin at home. But is this really time travel? Perhaps not in the sense that we usually think of it, but according to the nature of space-time, it is. So, if John's journey began in 2003, it would have taken him only five years to travel to the year 2053, whereas it would have taken Jack 50 years. In a sense, this means John has been time-travelling. So far, we've only explored travelling into the future, but is travelling back in time possible? It is mind-boggling to think about time travel. What if you went back in time and prevented your father and mother from ever meeting? You would prevent yourself from ever having been born. But then if you hadn't been born, you could not have gone back in time to prevent them from meeting each other. There are many paradoxes that prove or give us the reason as to why time travel to the past is impossible. Let's look at some more of these. The grandfather paradox. You travel back in time and kill your grandfather. So now, your father won't be born, and neither will you. So, if you're not even born, who killed your grandfather? Hmm. Time to put on your thinking hats, guys. The Hitler Paradox. You travel back to the past and kill Hitler. History changes, and now there is no Hitler. Now, if Hitler doesn't exist, why would you have travelled back in the first place to kill him? The Infinite Loop Paradox. A man travels back to the past and marries a woman. After that, he returns to the present. The woman gets pregnant and now has a son. Years later, that son becomes the time traveller who goes into the past and marries the woman. So now, who is the son and who is the father? If, in fact, these scientists are correct and assuming travelling to the past would cause a paradox, then we have our answer. Time travel to the past is impossible. So to answer your question, is time travel possible? To the future, yes, but to the past, it's a no, for now. <laughs>